it was um i i guess i i just um it's very sexist um it's oh. i don't want to listen to a guy who's never had sex tell me about my life i i just look at them i'm like how you aren't a, a figure of authority to me. You're just a guy with limited life experience. And guess what? I date a lot of those. <laughs> I don't, I'm not going to go listen to you every Sunday. Like I, it doesn't. Uh, and of course the, the abuse scandals are just yeah. horrific and okay. the way the church covered it up and the way they still cover it up and they, they try to avoid helping the victims is it's, it's like a criminal organization in a way, but you know, I'm glad you're congratulations to you. Having said <laughs> that, yeah. <laughs> You've kept your faith. That's good. No, I, I, it, it would be nice, but I just, uh, I can't look at a priest without thinking, what have you done? You know, like, are you an uncaught uh, pre- pedophile? That's that's how I think of priests. Okay. Do you have, like, uh, memories? I, I of... believe they prefer to be known as pre-caught. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have memories of, like, sex ed in uh, high school? Like, was that being, like, super awkward or I don't, sort of out of touch? I don't remember that. Um, I'm still getting information from the internet on sex. There's a lot out yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. I Porn, remember, Pornhub is really helpful to me. It's remember, a great resource. Uh, Slightly we, more valuable than WebMD, <laughs> in which you know, every sexual act ends in cancer. So. <laughs> we have this bald, extremely angry priest with like almost like Coke bottle glasses named Father Frederick. And I like he, where this is going. Wait, is that you? <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't what? Father Frederick. Your glasses seem thick, that's all. Carl's about to do some Not character work, if that's okay. Oh. <laughs> Damn it. He's a squinter. He warned you he was I know, a squinter. You said you were a squinter, and you are you. squinting a little bit. <laughs> so mean. I like you, Lori, leave. <laughs> hey, you wanted something awful to happen. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the Oh Man, That's it's Awful Roast of Carl Kozlowski. <laughs> What's the deal with that anyway, hat? So Father Father <laughs> Frederick, uh, he uh, one time he was just like he's like really riled up and he's yelling and he actually goes, "Well, sex when you're a teenager before marriage is mutual masturbation," and like everybody starts like trying not to explode oh laughing. Oh my god! And like all of us are also thinking, "Yeah, like so." I mean, yeah, that's about it. Like, how's that bad? What? Wait, is he said that at mass? No, 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 in class at Catholic <laughs> high school. <laughs> Yeah. That is not During much That would be amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Horrifying. Yeah, I know, I know. Yeah. And then I just remember the, also... What, uh, what was the a, theme of the sermon today? <laughs> <laughs> definitely got our attention. And then we had this other one a time where the, the, the principal was named Father Tribu. His last name was Tribu. And, he, um, and he's like, so boys, why is it bad to go steady? And I, I was in Little Rock, Arkansas. So imagine the enlightened response this one kid... He goes, me, Father, call me. He goes, okay, Michael, why is it bad? It goes steady. And he actually said, because if the girl gets pregnant, her father knows who done it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Oh, my God. Wow. Yeah, and so that's how Arkansas has high let's, pregnancy rates. Let's talk about my book again, please. Yes, okay. Some <laughs> more <laughs> priest jokes. Okay, gotcha. So, um... <laughs> I'm here to plug a book. No, of course, tonight. of course. <laughs> right. So what? what is, uh, what would you say is, um, like, the, uh, the, the most surprising thing you learned about uh, death and dying and all that from dealing with all this and contemplating it or whatever like what's or what's the funniest thing that you think in um, all well, of it well you know your family has to rearrange itself you know like uh-huh. there were four pillars in my family's my mom my dad my sister and me and then we all sort of readjusted and now there's three mm. and um, it works you know it's not as fun and uh, I wish she was back but you know, you you can you readjust. I if anyone's like listening and they're in a situation where they have old parents that are still alive, um, I recommend secretly recording conversations because uh, when they're dying, the conversations change, of course, and um, you you get some of the uh, the interplay between your parents that, of course, is going to be lost when one of them is gone. Um, and just if you can, just record at dinner. You know, just put your phone on the table. You probably keep it there anyway because you're an asshole. <laughs> and uh, just secretly record. Don't tell anyone. And then just you'll have it, you know. And you can remember when your mom – I like I listen – my mom's voice is like five octaves higher <laughs> now that – um you know, when she was talking to my dad because they were joking. And mm-hmm. now she's just depressed and not joking. And her voice is like this. And oh, jeez. So, oh, yeah. Huh. When yeah. my grandmother was passing away, she got a little racist towards the end. Yeah. 
kind of uh, let some stuff out about Puerto Ricans, which <laughs> isn't. But, a, but a on, in her defense, have you met Puerto Ricans? Listen, <laughs> in, in your grandma's defense, <laughs> there oh something needs to be said. <laughs> she was the flag bearer. I'm, I'm waiting for you to get, apply for that position to the Trump administration. <laughs> <laughs> well, this was in Bowling Green, Kentucky, so it was all a moot point anyway. Oh, there's there's like tons of Don't get me started about Kentucky. Bowling Green, Kentucky. Hey, <laughs> A uh, huge massacre, Yeah, yes. My grandmother yeah. was the only victim. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I'm not going to tell the jokes here, but my sister uh, like I moved to a series of tinier and tinier towns across the south. One of them was Bowling Green, Kentucky, and he's the only person I've ever met from there. Oh, yeah. And a lot of my jokes are about having to endure Thanksgiving in Bowling Green, Kentucky. Why don't you have any books about Bowling Green, Kentucky? <laughs> I will. Okay. I will. All right. <laughs> exactly. yeah, people die in Bowling Green. Yeah. <laughs> so um, not all of them in massacres. <laughs> I'll, write the, I'll write, write the forward. <laughs> so uh, we, we got to wrap up in a couple of minutes. But do you have a? Uh, I guess we always like to ask comics uh, if they can think of like a particularly funny, awful encounter with a heckler or a manager or a bad road motel. Anything that uh, springs to mind along Good those lines? Road horror stories. Yeah. Um, well, like, there's a clip, clip on YouTube that um, when I was at, in San Antonio and mm-hmm. um, L- no, it's not LOL. It was the River Center Comedy Club. It might be the improv now. I think now. it's an improv. Yeah. Now, yeah. So uh, it was the first day after the New Year's Eve show. It was the January 1st show. And I was on stage and I was doing a joke about how much I loved bread. And um, a member of the audience threw a roll at me. Oh my god! And then Texans, um, man. Yeah, and then that that kind of devolved into a funny thing. But <laughs> it's a good thing that yeah. it wasn't about how much you loved guns. <laughs> <laughs> but what was really annoying was there. I had talked to the crowd before, and there was a guy in the military um, sitting right up front, and the guy who threw the roll was behind him. And it wasn't like a hard baseball throw; it was like an up alley oop. So you could see the red coming, and I saw it, and I was like. Is that is this happening? Is that <laughs> coming at me? Because there's lights in your face. You can't really see that much. I just had, I saw something and I saw heads going up and the military guy didn't even try to catch. I'm like, you're supposed to protect Bro. me. That's your job. And all you had to do is try to block it. And you just sat, he like, I saw his head watch it go over like, oh, this will be interesting. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> well, the only I, I can actually think of a sort of a parallel. I went uh, one time, t- the first time I ever went to uh, the Rocky Horror Picture Show, I was really late at, into the party on this. It's the only time I went because of what happened. I was in my mid 20s, went in Chicago, sat in the back row, at just the like take it all in. And no, this was in um, the, the, the little, ho- uh, the little uh, theater on the edge of Evanston. The, I can't remember what they call it now anymore. Uh, it was ch- uh, part of the chain with the village, but anyway, whatever. And so no, this I'm sitting is in the, the back important. row. Well, you know, know, we start the show with local jokes about LA, then we end with local jokes about Chicago. We're, sitting, and- we're not even in Bowling Green. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so I'm sitting in the back row, so I could just like you know see all the spectacle happen. I didn't really care to participate. Well, so I'm, so I'm just totally whooping it up, laughing at everything that's going on. And all of a sudden, during a rain scene, people start chugging wa- chucking water out of glasses, and somebody flung one backwards and so i'm watching the screen and all of a sudden i see it oh looks like God. it looks like in t2 that when the terminator 2 is like turns into that weird mercury like thing that's floating at him or oh, floating yeah, around right, and right, I, just, right. I was like what is that was, <laughs> and about split second later bam i just get hit smack in the face with a with a well, giant stream of water was thing, like whenever something like that happens when you if you watch it on tape people are like well why didn't you duck or whatever it's like you can't believe it's happening and you need you need five seconds to go oh this is happening and then duck and usually you just have two seconds like you actually yes. need to have served in Iraq or Afghanistan <laughs> to believe that something's it's coming that at you. readiness. Well, that, well, yes. yeah. You know, because, yeah, you were saying the lights, but also uh, in a general comedy club setting, you're not expecting someone to throw a roll. Right, uh, really right, right, anything. Right. Yes. Mm-hmm. But no, nothing. rolls yeah. specifically yes. to this. And you also don't always have <laughs> to. And what a waste of a roll. I mean, firstly, first of all, I love rolls. Yeah. There's, Why uh, not just hand it to me? Because I didn't catch it. It dropped on the ground, and now I can't eat it. It's awful. Five second roll. <laughs> five like, second roll or rule? Well, either. <laughs> there's a uh, there's a cafe in somewhere in southern Missouri. 
Uh, yeah. I, I, they have billboards when you're going across I-70 in Sykes to Missouri, Lambert's Cafe, home of the Throwed Rolls. Oh, yeah. And I, I asked one of my roommates who was talking about it, and they are, there's apparently someone walking around like with the aluminum box, like the guys with the hot dogs at the ball game, but walking around the tables, rolls, rolls, and yeah, right here. Chuck and he just you. opens it up and he chucks a roll at you. That is one reason to go to Mississippi. There you go. Yeah. Yes, because the cafe is in Missouri. Oh, so. okay. <laughs> no, I, I think you were right. That is a great reason hey, to go I to got Mississippi. The M and the S is in there. That's Everyone in get there. off my back. Well, on that local note, uh, so we, we want to encourage everybody to go and uh, buy your book. Uh, and it uh, comes out again, what day? It comes out February 13th. Oh, and I'll be at so Romans in Pasadena on February 20th, Tuesday the 20th at 7.30 p.m. reading it. It's pretty funny. Come on out. It'll be fun. Night. Yeah, Dead People Suck is the name of the book, Lori Kilmartin. And where can people uh, find out the rest of it? Do you have your own website? And all? Uh, Kilmartin.com, 1L and Kilmartin. Do you know, on the bottom of your Wikipedia page, it says, no relation to writer Paul Gilmartin. That is an obsession of Jimmy Pardo's. Oh. And it turns out <laughs> I we are very out distantly related because oh his ancestor was at Kilmartin and changed to Gilmartin, which I told, I'm like, I... <laughs> Please tell me why. Like, you distanced yourself, but not that much. Like, it's fascinating. I don't know how that happened. I burst out laughing when I saw that. Yeah. Wow. So just to clear that up. <laughs> All right. Well, hey, we want to thank you for coming out. And until next time, I'm Carl Kozlowski. I'm Kevin Corcoran. Dr. David Robinson. And this has been another edition of Oh Man, That's Awful. Thank you for listening. Bye.